Hello Internet, and welcome back to the Sims 4 Legacy Challenge with the Dulex. Um, I wanted to talk about what happened on Friday in France. Um, the last time I was planning to play the game was on Friday the 13th. I was coming home from work and I thought it would be nice to play The Sims 4 because I had, I had some time. And then I heard on the TV that there were shootings uh, in, near Place de la République, which is where my, which is where my uncle lives. Um, so I got scared right away, and I called my mom, asking her if she'd heard from my uncle, and she asked me why, and I told her that there were shootings happening in Paris. And as we were talking, like the number of shootings happened, we heard about bombs. In next, next to the Stade de France and all the things, so we started getting really worried. After a while, my mom called me back, telling me that my uncle was safe, um, that he was hiding, because uh, he was going out that night. Um, and then I started having a look on social networks because I wanted to hear about my friends. And uh, as time went, we heard more and more things, and we heard about the hostages in the Bataclan. So I went on, on Facebook and saw some of my friend getting checked, you know, like, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe, which was really nice, but some of my friends weren't checking, and I know a lot of people in Paris, because uh, I have family there, my mom's from Paris originally, my uncle lived there, uh, my cousins live there, uh, my mom's cousins live there, and I have uh, some very good friends. Uh, one of my, some of my best friends live in Paris. Um, one works at the Figaro. I texted her right away, and she answered me that she was safe. She was inside her building, um, and most of my friends were going okay and okay. But some of them, I had no idea how they were. People I heard, hadn't heard from in a long time. Um, people I wasn't cl very close with anymore, um, and everything. So I started uh, waiting and waiting and trying to see if they would answer and there was this hashtag which was Recherche Paris where people would look for their uh, missing people and I saw some of my friends sharing, asking if they had seen, if anyone had seen their friends. So I started getting really worried for people that I didn't know but I could have known, people that could have been me. And as the night went, you know, like, those missing people, like, there would be more and more and more missing people. And some of the missing people would, like, turn dead, you know, like, they would, like, no longer be missing, they would be dead afterwards. And I still wouldn't hear from my friends. And around, I don't know, maybe 6 p.m., I had heard from most of my friends, but two. So I really couldn't sleep, because I didn't know, I know that one of them's a musician. And there was like a hostage situation in a concert hall, so she could have been there. Uh, the other one liked metal, I guess, so she could have been in there too. And I simply didn't know, so I started writing on their Facebooks, trying to see like, hey, are you okay? Is everything fine? And I saw that more and more people liked my post, asking if anyone had heard from either Audrey or Laura. And that was really, uh, really frightening. Around 8 a.m., Laura answered me. She wasn't in Paris that night. She went back to her parents' house for the weekend to see her boyfriend. So she was not in Paris, so that was really nice. And Audrey, Audrey, answered me 20 hours after the events. Um, she was in the area and she had to flee. And when she fled, she lost her cell phone. And she went in like a very, very tiny room with like 20 people in them and like they were they were told to stay away from the window so like they stayed in this very little room for like several hours and she had like no cell phones and no way to tell anyone that she was safe and she had no idea what was going on she just heard shots outside and people screaming and and more shots and apparently it was very frightening um on the days that followed on the weekends more and more people would like post pictures of their loved ones, their friends, trying to see if like anyone had heard from them. And all the people that went missing would be like, it, we don't need to look for them anymore, don't tweet or don't post about their them being missing. Uh, we have news from them which would mean they were dead and like all those faces would show up and they would always be people around 
my age, you know, like late teens, early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, you know, um, all those young people that were just going out on a Friday night and that would end up dead and some of my friends would be personally affected by those deaths. Uh, for example, uh, one of the hostages that died in the Bataclan uh, was Elodie and my friend Lucille, the one I texted right away, uh, knew her apparently. Um, there was this other guy, François Félix, um, who was apparently the brother of the brother of a girl who was like a friend of a friend of mine and he's dead too and that just felt really really close um, after the after the weekend I had to go back to work and I actually work with uh, with students uh, teenagers and I was supposed to uh, welcome them and listen to them and uh, uh, you know, just hear what they had to say, know how they felt, uh, maybe try to answer their questions, but honestly, I had no idea what I could possibly tell them. I had been just as traumatized as they were. Uh, we were also concerned, we were afraid that we would have some bad reactions. Uh, and when the kids arrived in the morning, we had 35 kids when they arrived in the morning on, on Monday. Uh, we they they were supposed to have a test, so we cancelled the test, and they, we all sat all together, asking them if they wanted to talk, and they all had very interesting reactions. Some of them were very angry, uh, others were terrified, simply didn't understand why um, we were attacked and why those people were dead. Uh, others were on the defensive. Um, others would, were afraid that they would be blamed for what happened because they were Muslim or because. Uh, they look like they could be Muslim, uh, so, so some of them were really on the defensive, but what was really interesting is that everyone felt really humane, you know, and everyone was like, it's really, what happened was traumatic, uh, they really tried to attack us, but we're not the only ones in the world, and we should also think of all the other people in the world that suffer from the same problems that we do, you know, like there were also terrorist attacks in Liban Lebanon, and there are also like wars going all over the world, <laughs> like uh, in Africa, all those people getting murdered in the Middle East, um, Israel and Palestine, uh, people in Ukraine, in Europe, you know, and everything in the world. And of course, we were very moved and touched by the worldwide solidarity. But in a way, we also felt like we had to honor other people. And also, um, what was very interesting is that, that I think that day we realized that those that this this events in Paris were other people's everyday lives, you know, having to run away from shootings and murderers and all of this. And I felt a lot of humanity and I think that France will be okay. People were like we don't have to mix um those those people are terrorists, you know, they're they're not like Muslims and we have to be solidary Soli we have to be solidary yeah we have to show solidarity with French Muslims you know have them understand that we know they're not responsible they don't have to apologize for it they're victims just like we are uh, the just like everybody is you know because we're we were attacked and the people that were killed could have been any one of us they were just people that were going out having a few drinks going to the restaurant going to a concert and they were just murdered for something that was is completely out of their control. Apparently it was for Syria, but what did these people do about Syria, you know, and what do Syrian people, you know, have to do with, you know. And that's why we're also very um, solidary with the migrants, knowing that, like, what happened, um, what happened, on Friday was what happens every day in their home and we understand them and even though their suspicion that one of the terrorists came to Europe through the through the migrants ways or whatever uh, apparently arrived through Greece uh, this will there will be a lot of paranoia but we know that it will only 
they're you guys all the migrants are not like that and it's probably just a way to have his turn against the migrants and the, the migrants are victims just like we are and victims shouldn't start attacking other victims but they should be they should unite and put an end to what happened um, so I would like to thank who is whoever is watching this uh, everyone in the world I would like to thank people that will never know how thankful I am for their support I would like to thank everyone anywhere and everywhere who showed their support to what happened to us who showed their love who expressed solidarity um, I was really moved I still am really moved and I just wanted to say thank you thank you very much for that so um, in order to enjoy life, because my sims, even though they're virtual and don't exist, have in a way also been attacked, because they're French, they're French sims. So I think that in order to pay a tribute um, in the memory of the victims, I think they should have a big party with their loved ones tonight. We'll invite the whole family over and we'll party all together. Um, to celebrate life and to show those terrorists that we were not we're not afraid and we will win this okay so I'm gonna save here and then we'll organize this big party thank you for listening to me whoever you are and thank you for your support